we need to talk about the housing market right now. If you're a buyer or seller, I need you to watch this video to the very end. I'm gonna break it down on both sides so you guys can make the best decision on whether or not to buy or to sell your home during this market. If this is the first time that you're checking out my channel, my name is Sean Oihara. I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot, helping you finance your homes all across the country. Whether you're a first time home buyer, you're building your real estate portfolio or looking to simply buy a vacation home, we've got you covered. You can hit the description for more information on how to get your mortgage right. And if you ever need a second opinion, you can always email me. Whether it's a purchase or refinance, I'm happy to look at it to help you understand the mortgage industry and make sure you don't get taken advantage of and make a mistake. Now this market is shifting and we all know that, but what does that exactly mean to you as a buyer and to you as a seller? I'm gonna break that down on both sides so you guys can understand and then you can make the decision for yourself whether or not you should purchase or sell your home right now. Let's start with being a buyer. As a buyer in today's market, I think it is a perfect time to be out there looking to purchase. And there's several reasons why. One, there's less competition. Why? Because the media has been talking about recession and inflation nonstop, and the average buyer is getting spooked. They don't wanna deal with it. They think that that's gonna be a market crash, which I've actually done another video that goes into more detail about this. So make sure to check out my channel and go watch that video. But as a buyer, when there's less competition out there, that's amazing because if you go and you look back the last couple of years, how many of you were looking at homes that had multiple offers? Probably every single one of you. In fact, the multiple offer situation was so bad that it caused some of you to even quit looking to buy because it got so frustrating. You would go out on a weekend, find a house you love, write an offer, and guess what? Monday you'd find out you didn't get the house. And you did that week after week, after week, after week, only to give up. And now you wish you would have bought. Now that house you could have bought for 400,000 is now 500,000. So right now, if you're a buyer, perfect time to be out there, less competition. Also as a buyer, sellers are willing to negotiate with you a little more. I know as a seller, that doesn't work so well, but we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But as a buyer, this works for us. Because again, a couple of years ago, we couldn't ask for closing costs. We couldn't ask the seller to negotiate with us. The seller held all the cards. And as a buyer, you did whatever they asked. You even went so far as to say, hey, Kirsten, I know your house is listed at 500,000, but I'm willing to give you 600,000 for your house because I love it so much. You didn't think twice about it, you did it. Why? Because you had no choice. In today's market as a buyer, the sellers are a lot nicer and they're willing to work with you. So take advantage of this situation. Forget what the media says, forget what your friends and family are telling you. Look for yourself, go out and start looking at property, get qualified, work with a realtor and see what actually happens. I'm seeing so many deals today come across my desk where my clients are getting the seller to cover all of their closing costs. And in some instances, when you think about it, that could be eight, 10, $12,000 that the seller's covering for you. So you don't have to come out of pocket with as much money today. And that's again, that's a huge win for you. As we're starting to see this market shift, prices are starting to become a little more realistic for a lot of buyers. Now, given prices are still higher than to me what, where they should be. And as far as affordability goes, I know it's still tough for a lot of you out there. However, sellers are becoming more realistic with their home prices because interest rates jumped up, which they're starting to normalize again and you as a buyer, you can take advantage of that. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Don't get caught up in the media. Don't get caught up in the hype with all the negativity that's out there because you get what you look for. You focus on the negative aspects of real estate. That's what you're going to find. Foreclosures, short sales, forbearances, whatever it is, you're going to find that you want to look for opportunity. You're going to find opportunity. And I can assure you, from what I've seen just in my office and the clients that we've been working with, they are getting amazing deals on homes. I'm even starting to see appraisals come in above the contract price, which is huge because normally when you buy a house, the appraiser's job is to go out and make sure that the home that you're in contract on is worth what you're paying for. For example, let's just say you're in contract for a house for $500,000 and appraiser goes out, which is an independent third party, right? There's rules and regulations now where me as a lender, I can't talk to the appraiser. 
real estate agents can't talk to the appraiser because why? Back in the 08 crash, lenders and real estate agents had an influence over the appraiser. Lenders could tell them like, look, if you don't appraise this house for what I needed to come in at, we're not going to work with you anymore. And you're literally threatening them and their livelihood. So of course the appraiser is going to appraise the house for whatever you asked, even if it wasn't even worth it, because why they still needed to put food on the table. So there's all these fraudulent transactions that were taking place back in the day, which caused the crash. But fast forward again to today, we don't have that. So if you're in contract on a house for 500,000, the appraiser goes out to make sure the house is worth the 500,000. And we all know we can't talk to him. So he's going to give us his honest opinion. Now, as I mentioned, we're starting to see homes come in above the list price. So in this example, a house could come back priced at $510,000. That means you as the buyer, you are walking into even more instant equity on the property. That's very, very rare to see these days. And even over the last several years, because most agents know what the price of the home's going for and they're pricing everything pretty accurately. So as a buyer, you might even have one of these opportunities where you walk into an additional $10,000, $15,000 of equity in your property. Again, that's a huge win for you. Now, if we flip this to the seller side, as a seller, unfortunately, you're probably going to see your house sit on the market a little longer than you like. Now, if we think about the last couple of years, in my opinion, that was an anomaly. That was something really, it was just the perfect storm for a seller. There was a little inventory. You could ask whatever you wanted for your home. You probably got what you wanted and you moved on and you probably bought another home. But I think where we are in today, sellers have to be more realistic with their asking price. That's why I think you're starting to see this early shift in the market because more inventory has come on the market. And again, take that with a grain of salt because when you look at what we had the last couple of years, it was record, record low inventory. So of course, any blip in inventory is going to look like there's massive amounts of homes that's hitting the market when it's really not. If you look at the numbers here in Clark County, it is still technically a seller's market. There's more inventory, but it's still, we're not even at equilibrium yet. So as a seller, you have to be realistic. If you're looking to truly sell your home, I don't think you're going to get multiple offers. Like we've seen a couple of years ago, you're not going to get 20 offers on a house. Um, unless maybe you press it really low and you're going to get everyone to bid the house back up in, in price. But I think you may get maybe a handful of offers. And I think as a seller, you have to also think about how do you get the maximum dollar for your property? Now that that's why working with a good real estate agent is always helpful um, because there's ways to preserve that. I've talked about this in some of my other videos where sellers are paying for closing costs or giving credits to buyers. As a seller, I would be more prone to give my buyer or the potential buyer of my house a seller credit. The buyer can use that seller credit to buy down their interest rate and get a much lower payment today and a much lower interest rate. In fact, a below market interest rate. And you as a seller, you can net more money. I have an entire strategy behind this. So if you're interested and if you are a seller and you want to see how this actually works, uh, send me an email and I'd be happy to break down some numbers for you so you can see how keeping your price high works to your favor. And the other thing of why this works is it preserves the value of your community. So if you're a realtor and you're watching this, this is a good strategy to implement because if you had, let's say Karen's house listed for 500,000, but the house sat for 30 days, it didn't move. Your initial gut reaction is to drop it 10, 20, $30,000. But the minute you do that, you are devaluing the entire neighborhood. And as a listing agent, you probably want to go and get more listings or you want to try to go sell more homes, but you are literally the one that has now lowered the value in the community. So this is why keeping the value high, but offering a credit now maintains the value of the home. So as a seller, I would definitely look at that strategy. If my house starts to sit. I don't think you missed the boat as far as selling your property. I just think you have to be a little more creative with how you can move the home. And again, this is why working with a good realtor or reaching out to me for some advice, I can point you in the right direction to maximize that dollar on the sale of your home. Now, as you sell your property, you now become a buyer. 
So again, you can take advantage of the market, use the proceeds, negotiate with the next seller, and it then begin becomes this domino effect of the buying market again, still being favorable and in a good position. So don't let interest rates scare you away. Seeing rates in the five and 6% range is not horrible. I've said this in multiple videos. Do some research yourself. I strongly urge you to go back and look at the 30 year fixed mortgage rate. Just do a simple Google search. Freddie Mac has the history. Go look at the numbers. Five, six percent, four percent. It's not horrible. That's kind of where rates typically trended to be. We literally had an anomaly of two and three percent. It was a hell of a time. And if you bought or refinanced in that time frame, kudos to you. I know some of you have reached out about refinancing your home, but you guys have amazing interest rates. That was great, but that's gone. We have to look at today. Four, five, six percent. That's the norm. Can we get in on a good deal? Absolutely. And remember, the interest rate's never permanent. If we, for whatever reason, trend back down to see the threes again, guess what? All of you are now homeowners. All of you have equity in your property and you can now refinance to a lower interest rate, saving you money. And now you're gonna look in hindsight and remember this, you're gonna say, I'm glad I bought that house. I'm glad I did that transaction because it all works out in the long run. So most of all, make sure to have patience, whether you're a buyer or a seller, because it's going to take a little more patience in this market. Buyers, you have the patience now. You don't have to rush out and write 10 offers this weekend simply because that's what your realtor told you and that's the only way you can get into a house. Sellers, you have to be a little more patient. Your house is not gonna sell in one day with 50 offers. It might take 30 days, it might take 35 days, but patience is the key in this game. When you rush to make a decision, that's where as a buyer, you make bad decisions. You work with the wrong lender, you work with the wrong real estate agent, you're, you buy the wrong house. As, as a seller, you rush to sell, which means you take a haircut on the value of your home. Why? Because you panic sell. Don't let that be the reason why you make a bad decision. Hire the right lender, hire the right real estate agent to protect you that has your best interest in mind. And if you need a recommendation, that's what I'm here for. If I can't help you, I'll point you to someone that possibly can. And again, if you need a second opinion or you want to go over some of these strategies that I mentioned in this video, send me an email, let's hop on a call and I'd be happy to help you. And I'll see you on the next video.